Good evening, Year 12. Thanks for coming, guys. I've got a couple of people here. I think I've got Russell, got Sian. I think Dibney's Russell. Give me a shout, Russell, if whether or not I've got it right. Um, uh, fingers crossed my Wi-Fi holds up today. So I had an issue earlier on in the day, and I had to stream off my day to off my phone. So fingers crossed it all goes okay. Oh, it does suggest that my connection's unstable. Oh, I don't know why. This is a nightmare. I'm tempted to... It does say that it's there. Oh, there's Yehern. So, guys, I'm going to put my second screen on now. I'm going to put my second screen on. It means I'm going to turn blue. Um, please, I'll swing over my the chat screen, because if I swing the chat screen over... And then what I can do is I can make that full screen and I'll go white. Whoa, it's really bright. Um, I may see if I can turn down the brightness. So I don't think I can, to be fair. Brightness. Turn that right down. There we go. That's better, isn't it? Cool. So please do, like, I've been having, as I said, I've been having a couple of Wi Fi issues. So. If you guys can just give oh, me... please do, like... There we go. Seems to be running okay at the minute. I'll now close down that window. I'll hopefully save me a bit of bandwidth. Um, great. I'm going to crack straight on today, guys. It's going to be a long webinar. Uh, I'll try and do it as quick as I can. Um, I'll do... It's good. Thanks, Jan. Keep me, keep me up to date on that one. If suddenly, if things start to go sideways and the quality drops off, uh, just let me know and I'll switch over to my streaming date when I can do it off my phone. It, it can be done. Cool. Right, guys, today is inorganic testing. Let's share my screen. So share screen, that one. And then I'll switch over to the, yeah, to that one. And then switch over, I think that's Oliver. Is Niazi, or is that, is that Oliver? Or is that, I don't know, I don't know who that is. Ooh, let me know. I'm going to switch my camera over to my clip cam. At least then I can do my dancing if I need to. There we go. I can still do my dancing then if I need to for any equations or whatever. So, okay. We're up and running, guys. So, here's the list. Oh, my Lord. This is going to be a long, this is going to be an interesting webinar. So, okay. I know it looks like a really scary list, and it is a bit of a nightmare, but... Unfortunately, guys, this just this is just a Shazza. Hey, Shazza, good to see you. So I know it seems like a long list, but we'll get through it. It's not as bad as I think. A lot of this is GCSE. Yeah, we've got a few new bits, but really it's about looking at the questions. I've got lots of papers lined up. You guys have all got access to my support sheet. So I'm going to be doing as many of these papers as I can at the end of the webinar once we've gone through all the tests. And... That way you can see the the what we're doing in lesson applied into papers. It makes sense to do that. Okay, so what I've done is I've scrolled through four years and I've scrolled through all your specification and picked up those odd those odd questions as best I can, those odd points that at Excel particularly want. And I've put them all into a big long list for us to be able to see all the stuff that they have asked to test over the last 10 years. So we're going to start off at the top. So this is all inorganic testing. This is not organic testing. I'll do a separate webinar on that because we know that the organic tests are completely standalone. They're different. You've got to learn those two. Um, but I've made a list so I don't forget all the bits that I need to do. So, okay. So inorganic testing is about looking for ions. That's what this is about. It also is looking for those inorganic elements such as chlorine, bromine, iodine, uh, but this is mainly focused. So today's lesson, if I go to draw, so this 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 lesson is focusing on focus. It is focusing on anions, anions, cations, and the inorganic elements. Uh, inorganics. I'll put inorganics, and then I can actually put in a couple of things here, which is. I'll put in the elements, that's mainly group seven. Now I had somebody ask me about group seven. Group seven, of course, is heavy paper three. Hey, Harry, thanks for coming along, dude. Appreciate it, good to see you, man. Your clip cam is doing a grand job. So we've got inorganic such as elements, and then you've got others, and I'm putting others loosely here, 
for a reason. It's things like water, inorganic compounds that don't contain carbon. There's a couple of oddities in here, but these are ones that I've seen appeared in the last uh, 10 papers that I've been flicking through. So I'm going to start off with this. This top list here is, is kind of the oddities, really, uh, oddities of Edexcel. And I think what I'm actually going to do is um, I could just do this in order with my list, but I don't think I'm going to. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the gases because a lot of these gases you guys already know. Yeah, I'm going to start with the gases, run all the way through these. Uh, send you to a couple of YouTube videos, which are really handy, by the way. They're really useful. Uh, and then I'm going to focus on the anion and cation test, which, of course, is heavy GCSE. And then looking and then um, then to consulfuric acid and purity. And then at the end, I'm going to pick up these. I'm going to pick up these oddities at the end. So but the oddities are ones that I've seen on their specification and seen these bizarre like standalone questions for. So I'll do those at the end and I'll show you the questions that link to them. So let's run through our gases first. So the first subtitle that we're going to have is gases. And I think most people are going to have these down. So number one, hydrogen gas. We know this. Yeah, this is. And, and what I'm also going to do is mention this idea of a, a, a method that's often asked for these questions. It's actually relatively rare in paper three on Excel to ask for any methods. They have given methods and then said scrutinize the method. So it's something to consider. But in gases, the first step in any method is to collect the gas. Now, there are two methods of delivering gases. You've got under, you've got underwater, downward delivery, and upward delivery, three ways of collecting gases. You can also collect it in the gas syringe. That's another method as well. So four methods. So it's just to mention that. So collecting gases. Collecting gases has uh, four methods. We've got underwater, which you guys all know, bubble. You, you, you have your conical flask set up with a delivery tube, and it bubbles it underwater and into a measuring cylinder. So this is underwater. This comes with a fault in itself. So the immediate thing is gases tend to be soluble. Gases are soluble. So you'll lose a bit. You'll inherently lose some of the water, some of the gases dissolving into the water. You've also got then downward delivery, uh, downward delivery, which, it, by the way, is garbage in reality. This is a really stupid method. I'm, I'm just going to draw like a stupid kind of picture of this of a conical flask. Yeah, with your cork on it. Yeah, and then just literally the, I know it looks really stupid here, guys, and, and I apologize for the crudity of my diagrams. I don't want to waste my time, waste your time, or my time, really, with drawing quality diagrams. Yeah, so we've got this, and then you collect it literally in a gas like this. And this is only used for gases which are heavier than air, and you never get high purity. So this is used for heavy gases, used for denser than air gases, denser than air. Yeah, these are usually big MR gases. Carbon dioxide is one of them, by the way. You can do it. And it has a problem. The problem, of course, for this one. Oh, laptop already starting to have issues here. I'll try and cool down my laptop. I'll get my little fan set up there. To... So the problem is low purity. Because you're not going to collect this. Yeah, you, th this is already full of air. So as your gas goes down and kind of fills up the bottle and pushes out the heavier air, you're never going to end up with a high purity. It's always going to be relatively low. You can then get upward delivery, which is exactly the same. Upward, oh, upward delivery. This is for lighter than gas airs, such as hydrogen is a great example. And that one is where the diagram is flipped over. Yeah, the delivery tube goes up, and then you have your, your gas jar, which is collecting it up here. This is for lower than uh, lower uh, density than air gases, hydrogen for one of them. Again, low purity is always an issue. Uh, and then you've always got the most the, 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 the most reliable one of a gas syringe. Just also mention gas syringes. You never collect the gas at the start. Yeah, just to mention this. Uh, you never really do this for any of them, by the way. Never collect initial gas because the initial gas is going to be the gas that was already in the container. Yeah, so your purity would be would be low. So we collect the gases and then we're going to do various tests on them. So for hydrogen gas, for number one, of course, it's the squeaky pop test. This is lit splint. Lit splint and you're going to get your squeaky pop. We know this. Don't want to waste your time with this, guys. 
Squeaky pop sound is the observation. Then number two is oxygen, collect your gas. And this is now using a glowing splint. Now clear switch there, not split, but splint. Yeah, and it's going to relight it. That's the observation, relight the glowing splint. Now chlorine uh, is a bit more complicated because uh, now we have these, like we have two observations with chlorine gas. So chlorine gas is a pale green or yellow. You can quote whichever one you like there. They don't actually mind. Sorry, I've got some apple juice I'm drinking. So the chlorine gas, once again, collect gas and then use damp. And notice my, my uh, capitalization of that. Damp red litmus. Ah, I've got it wrong. Damp blue litmus. Yeah, and it's, it's always important to remember this. Damp blue litmus. And the observations are it will turn red, then blue. Sorry. <sighs> red, then bleach. Ooh, sorry. Turns red, then bleaches. If, if you're wondering why, uh, is bleaches with an AS? Someone confirmed the bleaches is an AS. So if you want to understand why that is, so what's happening is the chlorine gas needs to be damp because it's reacting with the water. It forms HCl, which of course is an acid, and hence turning the whole paper red, so you need blue. But then you also get hydrogen chlorate one, which is a bleaching, a mild bleach. So this is what bleaches it white at the end of it. So bear in mind, by the way, disproportionation going on there, which is quite nice, starting off at zero, going to minus one and then plus one. Uh, if you haven't, if you don't know what disproportion, see, and do we just say bleaches or can we name it like a color like white? Uh, yeah, you can say turns white. That would be okay. That would be acceptable, Sian. It's totally fine. Turns white. You can say red, then white. They, you're going to get given things like red and then bleaches, but either one is absolutely fine. Um, then we get ammonia gas. Now, ammonia gas is an important one because this comes up on a regular basis by Excel. They do really like it. By the way, thank you, Sian, for contributing on the chat. It's very much appreciated. It really is. So number four is ammonia. So ammonia gas, which is NH3 as a gas, yeah? We know it's a base, so we're going to use damp. Notice my emphasis again. Damp red litmus in this case. So a total switch. Damp red litmus, and it will turn blue. And it will turn blue. Just to explain to you in the equation as to what's happening, I'm going to be flipping to and from equations, guys, to so try to keep up. So I've got ammonia reacting with water to form ammonium hydroxide, which, of course, you recognize the hydroxide ion, ion as an alkali. So it's the OH minus ion that's being detected at that point. So it, it's, it's now there are what they will now do is for the ammonia one. They're now going to ask you for a confirmation test. Yeah, there is a second test for ammonia. So this is this is kind of test A. Now we've got test B, and that is you're going to use, you're going to use conch HCl. Now what you're going to see is white fumes, white, white smoke actually, not even fumes, white smoke. Just to explain to you what's going on here, the ammonium gas is reacting with the HCl gas, and they're forming solid ammonium chloride in the air, in the air which means you're going, that's there, is the identity of your white smoke, yeah? Now, this test can be used. This is where I can now bounce to another set of tests of mine, because what you'll notice is that I've also got here the hydrogen halides, yeah, number seven. So the hydrogen halides, which are simply the hydrogen, hydrogen halides, which are simply... HF, HCl, HBr, HBr, and HI. Now, you'll never be asked to deal with HF. It's way too dangerous. All of these gases are corrosive. If you're asked for a, a precautionary measure, it's in a fume cupboard. Yeah, so these are all gases at room temperature, all of them, all gases at room temperature. And what we can do is we can test for all of these gases with ammonia gas, and that's actually going to be conch ammonia. And what you're going to see is that white smoke of the ammonium halide, so ammonium chloride. 
uh, same thing, and then it's going to be ammonium bromide. So this is really a, it's kind of a confirmation test of ammonia gas. Yeah, the other one's a little bit obscure, ammonium iodide, and all of these are ionic solids. Yeah, hence the white smoke. So that actually picks up, um, it picks up the, the hydrogen halides down here at number seven. So do bear this in mind. This will become clearer that once we get to the end of this and then we look at questions. The next one, of course, is carbon dioxide, number five. So carbon dioxide is one that you guys have been doing since GCSE and students always make the silly mistake of not saying bubble through. I know it seems mad, yeah, but it genuinely is required. Bubble through lime water. Yeah, bubble through lime water. Observation is a white precipitate. I will write down the word precipitate. This is the first time I've done it. Precipitate. Yeah, but I will then sub uh, replace that with PPT from now on to make this a little bit shorter. Let's have a look at the equation which goes through with this one. So this is carbon dioxide gas which is being bubbled through calcium hydroxide, aqueous, and that's lime water. And what we're going to form is calcium carbonate, which is an insoluble solid. And we're also gonna get water as a byproduct as well. So there's our white PPT. And they love this at Edexcel. They're gonna make, they're gonna give you these tests and say, what's the identity of the observation? And that's the tricky bit. You start to have to pick these up at this point. Notice that we've got a gas and aqueous. Yeah, if you have a gas and an aqueous in any test, you've always got to say bubble through. Yeah, because otherwise the gas won't go into the liquid. Yeah. Uh, next one. Uh, is there any other te uh, test for carbon dioxide? Eh, nah, not really. You could, you could argue, like some people often say, oh, it puts out candles. Well, uh, other gases do that. Nitrogen ga gas does that. All the noble gases do that. So not one really to talk about, but anyway, let's continue. Bubble through lime water. Next one, sulfur dioxide, number six. So sulfur dioxide is a gas, and we're going to bubble it through water. Yeah, we're going to take this. We're going to add, we're going to bubble through water. There's actually two tests for SO2: bubble through water, uh, and then bubble through water bubble through water, and then, then add universal indicator. Universal indicator. And the universal indicator will turn red. Observation, turn red. I should be doing all my observations. So just to explain to you what's happening here, the SO2 gas, the SO2 gas is reacting with the water, and it's going to form sulfurous acid. Please do not put sulfuric. You do not get sulfuric. Yeah, if you did, acid rain would be a whole lot worse, and we don't. So we get, this is called sulfurous acid, and it does get asked at Edexcel, so do watch out. This is the, the cause of acid rain, if you're interested. Yeah, cause of acid rain. There is another test for, for sulfur dioxide, and that's to use potassium dichromate paper, which goes from orange to green, but it doesn't get asked at AS, it gets asked at A2 more than any other. Um, we'll look out for questions on that. I'm tempted to add it anyway. I can do, it's a bit, to be fair, I'm pushing the limit really there on, this would be an A star crazy question if Edexcel decided to do this. Yeah, you could use uh, potassium, potassium dichromate paper, dichromate paper and and it needs to be damp because it's reacting with water yeah it's gotta be damp yeah and it's going to turn from orange to green is what it's going to do <clears throat> orange to green that's because the dichromate is oxidizing the so2 to so3 and the dichromate then is turning from plus six to plus three which is then green if you're interested in terms of the equation for that the SO2 is being oxidized by the oxidizing agent, which is K2Cr2O7. If you're interested about what causes the color, the orange color is the dichromate ion. And then what happens is you form SO3, and the byproduct is Cr3+. 
and that's green. Um, I'm going really far here, guys. This is your orange one, and then chromium three plus is a is a green color. So it's chromium three that's doing it. I've not seen the mouse that one yet, but it's it technically is actually on the Edexcel spec, but it's it's something that I don't really want you to worry about. So the hydrogen halides number seven we've already covered. Yeah, so the hydrogen halides. And the hydrogen halides, of course, are simply being... Now, you've got a couple, again, you've got a couple of tests here. You could bubble it through water and measure the pH. And they, they often link question, little link tests together at this point. Um, I'll explain that now. So you could argue that if you, ha if you had a reaction that produced HBr gas, yeah, you, can, you could A, test for that with conch ammonia. Yeah, so you could test for this. So A would be conch ammonia gas. Yeah, so conch, I'll switch back to black. Conch ammonia, conch ammonia, uh, white, white smoke, and already covered that equation in the lesson already. Um, and that's going to be ammonium bromide as an ionic solid. There is a second one, which, which is a bit tricky, really, because what you can do is you can bubble it through water. So bubble through water bubble through water and what you will make is you're going to make hbr hydrobromic acid um and then what you can do is test for the, the acidity with something like a carbonate any limestone calcium carbonate and you'll see effervescence or you can then test for it with, and then test for the halide ion with silver nitrate and nitric acid so they tie these together just to warn you so bubble through lime water sorry ah bubble through water that is HBr plus H2O. Oh, so by the way, this actually just simply makes HBr aqueous. But if you're interested, the real equation, of course, is going to be this one. Yeah, it's going to make the aqueous ions because acids dissolve in water. Yeah, and then we can test for the acidic H plus ion with any carbonate, sodium carbonate, if you like. Yeah, and we will see fizzing. Yeah, and then you can test for the halide ion with nitric acid and silver nitrate. Yeah, nitric acid followed by silver nitrate. Uh, and they, they, this is the kind of thing they start doing at A-level. They start bringing all of these tests together uh, and expecting you to be able to, to manage it. So next one, uh, into bromine. So we're now into the group sevens. So you'll never test for fluorine. Fluorine be crazy. So you'll never test have to test for fluorine. Yeah, but we do have to test for chlorine gas, which we have already mentioned, I believe. Uh, no, we haven't actually. Oh, we, we did. We, oh, sorry. Ah, chlorine's higher up. We're now testing for bromine. So bromine, so eight is the test for bromine. So bromine, of course, BR2. Uh, we're going to be usually focusing this from an aqueous perspective. Uh, we know that it's orange aqueous. Yeah, bromine water is orange. And what you're going to test it with is the test is add any, add any named, notice the capitalization, any named alkene. So this will be something like, uh, a great one is, is hexene or cyclohexene, either one. It's the first liquid at room temperature. I'll put brackets, hexene. And of course, what's going to happen, the observation, which I'll do in red, is it's going to go from orange, orange to colorless. Yeah, colorless solutions being decolorized. Um, if you're interested in what the reaction is, what's happening here is the hexene, which I'll just do hexuanine. I think that's very reasonable. I'm choosing a hex because it's a liquid at room temperature. You, know, you add bromine to it, and Br2, of course, is orange. And what the reaction produces is it goes across the double bond. It breaks the double bond. It breaks the double bonds and the BRs go across it. All the rest of these are hydrogens, by the way. So, and that compound there, any of the um, dibromoalkanes are colorless now at this point. So uh, the orange color originally is here and the decolorized version uh, is there. I'll do that then as a gray. That's decolorized, so colorless. So bromine, uh, next is, I believe, iodine, which comes straight out of biology. So number nine is iodine. We test for iodine, this is biology, not chemistry, but NXL do like to ask it. 
and we test that for uh, we test it with starch. So the test is starch solution, by the way. Yeah, starch solution. You're not just allowed to say starch. Yeah, starch solution, and the observation is going. It's going to turn blue black. That's what it's going to do. Uh, turns blue black is what that forms. Uh, it's actually a very complicated equation because you're forming a you're forming an iodine starch complex, which is very big. So you don't need any equations for that one, which is nice. Next. I will say, by the way, that one of the most important things I need you guys to pick up on, which I think I might have mentioned with the conch sulfuric in group seven, which is down here, I do need you guys desperately to know your halides. Sorry, ah, your halogens. I need you guys to know your group sevens. If you don't, you're going to get battered by this, guys. Yeah, group seven, the halogens. Yeah, we need to know. Fluorine, we don't deal with. It's a, it's a pale, 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 pale yellow gas. It's colorless, really. And it's so reactive, it'll set fire to diamonds in the dark. We ignore it. But what we do need to know is about chlorine, bromine, and iodine. I cannot stress the importance of this. So chlorine is a, a yellow or green gas, and it's colorless in solution. Yeah, so as a gas, then as aqueous, um, uh, I'll add the state symbols. So the chlorine gas is is yellow, yellow or green, either one. Bromine a, as a gas is brown. Iodine as a gas is purple. Yeah. Then we get to aqueous. Chlorine gas. Chlorine is colorless when it's aqueous. Bromine is orange. It's been diluted, so it's become orange instead of brown. And the iodine is now brown. Now, can I just point out that that's a problem actually? Because in reality, iodine is not particularly soluble. If you put iodine into water, it'll sit at the bottom and the solution will turn almost orange, really. Not even really that. It hardly does anything at all. You actually need it in a solution with potassium iodide for actually to see the, the dark brown color. Don't ask why. Iron dipole and iron... Oh, iron... I, it's not, I want to say iron dipole interactions, but it's not. It's iron temporary dipole interactions. It's a nightmare. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that too much, but... It is a nota bene, really, yeah, that iodine is not, not really soluble, not very soluble. So you're going to get this pale, 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 pale kind of yellow solution. And, and, uh, and then what you do is you then mix it with Ki, iodine plus potassium iodide solution, which is colorless. You then form a dark brown color. That's now brown. Yeah, that now forms the dark brown color. So it's just a note of bene. And then we go, well, bromine is a liquid, so we now need to add a state symbol here for liquid. Chlorine gas, you're going to ignore. Chlorine is actually a yellow liquid, which is lovely to remember. Uh, uh, bromine, of course, is a brown liquid. But iodine, you never really see as a liquid. It is a gray liquid if you ever see it, but you won't really come across it. Uh, and then the other one, of course, is then to add in the solid one. Of course, the iodine is a gray solid so we're going to see these in exam questions at the end anyway, so just nice to bear in mind. You do need to know those desperately. Please, please, please learn your group sevens. Comes up a lot. Something to bear in mind. Uh, so that brings me to the end of all my gases and my other kind of, ex like, because oh, these are all gases up to here. I know that bromine, of course, is a liquid and iodine is a solid. <clears throat> but it's nice to have covered most of the inorganics. Okay, now we're going to drop into our ion testing, which I think you guys, of course, will remember from GCSE. So I'm really just adding this now. I'm only adding a few on from what you had. So we had cation testing. Cation testing. So the first thing, of course, we talk about are flame tests. Yeah. So you need to know a method for this, method for this guys. Really important here. So the first thing I need to do is method uh, flame test. I'll do, uh, I'll do a little triangle, yeah, which is method. So this is uh, nichrome wire, nichrome wire. Now we choose nichrome wire because it has a high melting point. Yeah, high melting point and low reactivity. Uh, and high melting point is the best. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put on that one anyway. Uh, low reactivity, it's inert. Um, and I do just want to focus on the high melting point. You're sticking it into a roaring blue flame. If it was, you know, if you're anything below 900, you're gonna melt. So nichrome wire, we're going to wash in wash in dilute dilute HCl, 
And then we're going to pick up solid. I should do this as bullet points, really. I'll do it in one big, long train. Nikram wire, wash and dilute acid. This removes, removes previous tests. Previous tests. Yeah. And then we're going to go pick up solid. Pick up. Pick up solid sample. Place. Place in roaring. Yeah. Roaring blue flame. And it needs to be the blue flame, because if it's not the blue flame, then it's the safety flame, which is yellow, and all you get to see is yellow. And that's called masking. We'll talk about that in a minute. So what flame tests do we then need to have? Now, please, please, please do not do what my GCSE lot do, which is to forget to include the charge. Please don't do it. Lithium 1 plus. This is not lithium metal. Lithium metal burns white. Yeah, burns white, and then you see the tail, little flickers of red there because the ions are heating up. But just be careful. Lithium ion is red. Yeah. Sodium ions are yellow. This is not complicated. You've had this from GCSE. Potassium one plus is lilac. Yeah. Then we drop into the two pluses. Just to point out that the others do have tests as well. Can we say we wash in HCl to remove carbonates? No, you can't, Sian. No, that's not correct. We are not washing to remove carbonates, Sian, because carbonates won't give a flame test. <clears throat> We're washing in dilute acid to remove any previous salts from the from the nichrome wire. Calcium two plus is orange red for Red XL. Please don't say brick Ralph red for Red XL. If anyone else is watching this for AQA or uh, Cambridge, I think you're allowed to say brick red. Uh, certainly for AQA, you're allowed. Uh, calcium two plus is orange red. You now pick up a new one of barium two plus. Barium two plus is a pale green. Pale green color. Yeah, you also have, of course, copper 2 plus, which is green blue. So do watch out for that. Notice the pale there for the. Uh, I also want to just mention, by the way, it does upset me when students are quoting metal ions in flame tests, which don't give flame tests. But they do do this in questions every now and again. Yeah, so iron 2 plus gives no flame test, no flame color yeah please know that magnesium two plus no flame color now the reason why people think that these do is because they they see magnesium metal burning oh magnesium it's white yeah it's why it's gonna burn bright white no that's not a flame test that's a chemical reaction it's magnesium burning in oxygen to produce magnesium oxide it's not the same thing as a flame test Please don't put it. Magnesium 2 plus is colorless. Now, there are there are others. Cesium is a blue, I believe. There's a couple of others as well, but you're not expected to know them. They will provide them to you. The only ones you're expected to know are these guys. Please learn them. Calcium, barium, copper, yeah, uh, six. And we'll see these in our questions again when we have a look. Okay, so we've done cation testing with flame tests. Now... We drop into cation tests in solution. Cation tests in solution. Now, in reality, this is just any other cation test. Yeah, this is because if it doesn't give a flame test, we've got to do something else. So we've got to now test for certain cations. And these are now relatively new to you, ASs. You've come from GCSE, and you knew all but the barium on the flame tests. But now... In the cation test in solution, you pick up a whole load of others, which is a bit of a problem. So the first one you pick up is calcium 2 plus. Calcium, so the, the test in solution, which I love, by the way, is simply to add sodium hydroxide solution. A few drops. Yeah, sodium hydroxide solution. Now, what you're going to detect is calcium 2 plus. So just to show you the equation... So the first thing in is, what am I going to see? I will see a white PPT. Let's now do, so that's the observation when you add it, yeah? And then we can do the equation. So what's happening here? The calcium 2 plus is reacting with two OH minus ions to form insoluble calcium hydroxide. Yeah, and there's the white precipitate. Now, you know that as lime water when it's aqueous. But of course, in high quantity, it's not very soluble, so it appears as a precipitate pretty immediately. We then pick up... Uh, magnesium 2 plus. We can test for magnesium 2 plus with sodium hydroxide and we form a white precipitate. That's a problem, isn't it? 
the Mg2 plus ion reacts with 2OH minus ions to form magnesium hydroxide, which is also a solid. This is the solubility of the group twos, guys. We form a white precipitate of this. It's nice to tie these together. The white precipitate is the sulfate. White precipitate, so sulfate is the hydroxide. And then we also have aluminium. Aluminium. We can also detect with sodium hydroxide and we form a white precipitate. These are all problems because they're all bloody white. What a nightmare. So what can we do? There is a reason why they have picked these three guys. The reason why, let me explain. So this is the white precipitate of aluminium hydroxide. So here's what we now fix with this, because if you form a white precipitate of calcium hydroxide, you can now prove it. Prove with proof. Flame test orange red. Yes. The next one is you can't prove it. You can actually filter it out and do the lime water test. You can actually do that. I've never seen the mask it. Just so you know, you could actually filter out that solid because if you filter out the solid, you've actually then just got a solution of magnesium hydroxide, even though it's only a small amount of it. You then bubble through carbon dioxide and it'll turn white. And, um, oh no, sorry, that's magnesium. Apologies. No, 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 no. ignore me. Ignore me, ignore me, ignore me. Uh, magnesium hydroxide. No, no, it's got pH slightly less. Uh, pH is like nine. It's not really soluble. Uh, but we can definitely prove this guy. Aluminium hydroxide. There is a reason. What we now do is add excess, excess sodium hydroxide, and it will redissolve. You'll see these on the questions in a minute. Redissolves. If you want the equation, I can give it to you. The equation is, I've, they've never seen, this is actually an A2 equation, by the way. It actually reacts with another OH minus ion to form this guy, which is now soluble. So it redissolves. I've never seen that equation being asked at AS. They won't ask it. Please don't worry about it. You do not need to know, but you do need to know we can make it disappear with excess sodium hydroxide. Next, right, now that we've done the white problematic people, now we can focus. Hi, Mr. Duncan. Hi, Sophia. It's nice to see you. This is an A-level chemical test lesson. Sophia, this covers most of your GCSE, covers all your GCSE, and a little bit extra. Um, so the other ones, of course, copper 2 plus, you did this at GCSE. Yeah, copper 2 plus, we add sodium hydroxide. This is, Sophia, this works for you too. Sodium hydroxide solution. The observation is a blue PPT. Let's have a look at the equation. The equation is Cu2 plus plus 2OH minuses to form copper 2 hydroxide, which is a solid and it is blue. And then we can pick up iron 2 plus. And iron 2 plus, we add sodium hydroxide and we form a green PPT, green precipitate. And that is because the iron 2 plus reacts with the 2OH minus ions to form iron 2 hydroxide, uh, uh, which is green. Now, this is, has an important side change. Yeah, this, is, uh, this goes red. This is a flag red. It will turn brown, turn brown on standing. The reason being is that it oxidizes in the air up to iron 3 plus. So it turns brown, which is the iron 3 precipitate, which we're about to see now. The Fe3 plus iron. We can test with sodium hydroxide and we form a brown precipitate, and that is Fe3 plus, and that doesn't change on standing, it's already at its max oxidation state. So that's iron 3 hydroxide, which is brown. There we go, and all of these are solids, hence why our precipitates. Right, there is one more cation that I need to test for this. One more, and it, it, this is one that everyone really needs to know, uh, and that is the ammonium ion. This is so important, this comes up a lot, year 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to test by adding sodium hydroxide. Yeah, still sodium hydroxide. Notice that all the cation tests that aren't flame tests are all sodium hydroxide. And the opposite, so we actually, this is slightly tricky. I'm actually going to do this as a separate one. First one, we add sodium hydroxide solution, aqueous, and then we have to warm it. And then once we've warmed it, um, use damp red litmus red litmus turns red no no turns blue so let me explain what the equation is here's what's happening 
The ammonium, can I make my pen a bit thicker at this point? Oh, I'm zooming right out, oh, that's not good. So the ammonium ion reacts with the, so with the hydroxide ion and turns into ammonia gas. Now the ammonia gas is soluble, so it dissolves into the water. But then you heat it, this is the warming bit. The warming drives the ammonia gas out because solubility of gases decreases with temperature. So you then produce ammonia gas, which you then test for with damp red litmus paper, and it will turn a beautiful blue. Alternatively, conch HCl nearby and white, white smoke will also happen. So that one comes up a lot, guys. We'll see it on the questions shortly, don't you worry. Right, any more cations that I need to deal with? I do not believe so. Let's have a look at my little list. Flame test, done. Ammonia test, transition metals. Ammonium test, sodium hydroxide, we're all done. Cation testing, boxed off. Right, next, we're on to the anion testing. So again, all GCSE. Yeah, this is all GCSE. So let's do the halide ions first. So this is where I really ought to start a new thing, but anyway, anions. So we are testing number one for the halides. Yeah, so the halides are Cl minus, Br minus, and I minus. Now you can't test for fluoride, by the way, and this is actually a note you do need to know. Yeah, cannot test for this. All fluorides, all fluorides are soluble. Now, what that means is you're never going to see a precipitate. This often comes up. Explain my fluoride can't be detected so with with uh, nitric acid and silver nitrate. You say because all fluorides are soluble. You're done. Uh, whereas these three, now this is where A level and GCSE come to blows because you learn at GCSE the test for all these three. What we're going to do is we are going to. This is why I need to remove my little soluble bit and go. We are going to bullet point. We're going to add. Dilute nitric acid, dilute HNO3. Notice the nitrate ion, by the way. And then we're going to add silver nitrate solution, AgNO3 aqueous. Notice that the nitrates at, um, match. We wouldn't, we'd, a common question at A level, can't use HCl. Because if you use HCl, you will add chloride ions to the mix and you'll get a false positive for the chloride ion. You also can't use sulfuric acid as well. Just to explain why, you can't use sulfuric acid either. Yeah, both of these guys are out of the question because they both form precipitates. Let me show you the equations for this. The Ag, of course, plus is going to react with the chloride ion to form AgCl, the white precipitate, false positive because of the acid. But the silver ion will also react with the sulfate ion as well to form silver sulfate, which is another white precipitate. It's actually slightly gray, but you're allowed to say white, which is nice. So you get a white precipitate, a false positive for, for the chloride ion. You can't, it also does it with the car carbonate ion as well, by the way. Carbonates also react with this CO3 2 minus to form silver carbonate. That's also, I need to put a two there. That's also a white solid. All of these are white solids and they're problems. Yeah, white solids. So you've got to be careful, white precipitates. So watch out for that. We'll look at questions and it'll become clearer again. So we're going to add all this. And what we now see is we form a white precipitate for the chloride ion, a cream precipitate. That's cream, not cream. Cream precipitate for the bromide ion and a yellow precipitate, a yellow PPT for the iodide. Just to tell you who is responsible for it, that is AgCl as a solid. This is AGBr as a solid, and this is AGI. Now, at that point, GCSE kind of comes to an end, but then A-level doesn't, because this is a massive issue. White, cream, yellow, they're almost identical. So what that now means is we now pick up a second test, and it's confirmation test. Confirmation test. So what we now do is to prove the white we would now add dilute, whoops, add dilute ammonia, dilute NH3, and the white one will vanish. The others don't. We then, to make the cream disappear, we have to add conch ammonia. Won't disappear on dilute, but it will disappear on conch. And the iodide 
never vanishes. You cannot make the yellow ever disappear. We're going to see it in questions. And guys, I cannot stress, you do not need any equations for this. You must learn that. Oh my God, it's every single paper, year after year after year. Learn them. Next, we've now covered the halide ions. So now I can tick off halides. Let's go for carbonates, nice and easy. So the carbonate ion, again, another anion. Now this one is, it's the, the, all these ions start just, yeah, carbonate. They just start doing them in sneaky ways at A-level. So the carbonate ion, which is CO3 2 minus, very straightforward test. Add dilute acid. You can actually add any dilute acid. Yeah, you add dilute acid, nitric, sulfuric, hydrochloric, whichever you want. Hi, meter, meter, just to show you, I am all prepared for your webinar. I know you've asked me to do it. I'm all set up, ready to do Jan 2016, paper one. I'll try and get it done tomorrow for you as best I can. I've just got to make sure I've got my students um, all up to date with the stuff they need. That's all. But I will, I will get it done. I will. So the carbonate acid is add dilute acid, and you're going to see the observation is fizzing. If you want to write down effervescence, you're more than welcome to do it. But I can't spell effervescence, so fizzing works just as well. Just to show you the equation, the carbonate ion reacts with H+. plus. It actually reacts with two of them, and it forms CO2 and water. And the CO2, of course, is released as a gas, and this is what is causing the bubbles. Yeah, CO2 bubbles. Yeah, like it. So carbonate ion's a lovely one. Thank you, you're the best. Very welcome. Um, so the carbonate ion, add dilute acid, fizzing. By the way, just to, just to say, by the way, Edexcel now at A-level do like to confirm this. Because if you saw an effervescent gas, it could be almost anything. So what they will usually do is spin you into how you prove this. Can I just point out, by the way, that if they ask you for a carbonate test and it's worth two marks, add acid seeing effervescence is probably enough. If it's worth three, it's not enough. You need to confirm gas, confirm CO2, bullet point, bubble through lime water, white, precip white precipitate. Can I say to my GCSE lot, uh, white PPT forms, you should just always do that. The Edexcel have a really bad habit of requiring that, even at GCSE. So please, please, please learn this together. Please just write down those two tests. That it's, it's kind of important that. So carbonate ion one, done. What have I got next? Carbonate ion sulfate, next. I like it. So the sulfate ion. Whoop, uh, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. Sulfate ion. So sulfate. This is our good old friend, SO4, 2 minus. So the test for the sulfate ion, we all know, the test is to use barium chloride solution, BaCl2 aqueous. And the observation we're gonna see, observe, is going to be a white PPT. Here is the equation. The barium two plus, so here's the equation. The barium two plus ion reacts with the sulfate ion to form insoluble barium sulfate. Cannot stress, Edexcel love this test at A-level. Yeah, because we actually eat this stuff. This is fed to you in hospital. It's called a barium meal. It's used in x-rays. Barium meal used for x-rays. Oh, that's not how you spell x-rays. X-rays. Um, and that's a white precipitate, white PPT. And now, just to tell you, they love to flip this. You know, as I've been going through all these tests, it's come, uh, can we say that it turns cloudy? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yes, Sophia, GCSE, absolutely. Uh, that, hmm, Tur turns cloudy is okay for the lime water test. You need to say white precipitate, really, for, for all of your other tests. Because if you say turns cloudy, it doesn't mean much, Sophia. Um, I, I would just recommend for you just to never, ever say cloudy for anything. You should say a white precipitate. It is just because you need a color. You'd have to say what cloudy white. Yeah, because it needs a color. Um, but yeah, I'd watch out for that. 
If you're thinking of doing A-level Sophia, just learn the precipitators, their colors with PPT after the precipitate after it, it's fine. So one of the things that I've, um, it's just popped into my head is, at A-level they tend to flip this. You know, GCSE it's very straightforward. They give you these things like step by step, it's all in one direction, but at A-level they tend to mix things up, make it a bit more challenging. And what they'll often say is, what's the test for a barium ion? And you need to add any named sulfate, sodium sulfate, sulfuric acid, uh, that there is a nota bene, by the way. Nota bene. A level tend to reverse tests. A level tend to reverse tests. Reverse tests. It's to stop people learning these things by rope. Yeah? So what they'll say is, what's the test for a barium ion? And what you say is, the test is to add sulfuric acid. And then what you're going to see, the observation, is going to be a white PPT of barium, the, the person responsible identity identity is barium sulfate they love this so another example of this um for a level is what's the what's the test for a silver iron i'm really struggling here won't let me zoom out any further or won't let me do something uh, another example of this um uh, another example would be what's the test for a silver iron yeah and everyone goes oh i never learned the test for a silver iron and what you just say is test is add any any sodium halide. Yeah, add sodium chloride. I'm gonna see in this case a white precipitate, a white PPT. Yeah, that's a white PPT too. And what's causing it is silver chloride. And then I can confirm that silver chloride. <clears throat> I can confirm that silver chloride <clears throat> with dilute ammonia solution. And it'll vanish. Yeah. Proof of the silver iron being there. So it's all kind of, A-level is more challenging in that respect. So do watch out for it. The last one is the hydroxide iron. And again, this was really me for doing the flip side of things. So the test for the hydroxide iron is a fascinating one. So OH minus ions, we know are alkalis. So the first test you could do, the first test for the hydroxide iron, you could do universal indicator. Yeah, universal ind. And the observation, of course, is going to, it's going to turn purple. Yeah. Uh, you don't need a, a person who causes it because it's actually a rather complex um, identity. But there's, this, there's another test. So that, that's test A. Yeah, this is test A. I'm realizing my writing is getting bigger and bigger. Test B would be to add something like, oh, what have I been using OH- for testing previously? Oh, I know. I'll add copper sulfate. Let's do copper sulfate solution to this. Because if there's a, a hydroxide ion present, I'm going to get a blue precipitate. And that's going to be the copper 2 hydroxide uh, precipitate. Yeah, that's the identity. So you can do lots of clever things here with chemical tests in terms of kind of identifying people by doing all of these. Uh, let's keep going. We're doing really well. Sulfate's done, hydroxide's iron. Right, now before I drop into the conk H2SO4 in group 7, I think it's good just to tick off purity. So, I'm very aware that my writing is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's try and zoom in a bit. So, test for purity. This is just a test for purity. If someone says, you know, I have, uh, let's just go test for purity. Example. So, oh, by the way, what is the test? So, number one, we are going to use a uh, melting point melting point test or boiling point test depending on if i've got a solid or liquid boiling point test yeah and so the example then would be so for water e.g if i have pure water what i can do is i could do a boiling point test and it will boil the observation is it will boil at 100 if there's any impurities that number will be higher higher or lower if you add salt for example you get iron dipole interactions and the boiling point increases yeah but it's just checking and confirming it yeah not overly complicated um there, there's they've done all kinds of funky stuff on that giving you cool little bits of apparatus um to test melting points and impurities um i won't show you those today but not particularly complicated um one of the things I think I've missed it, and on the oddities I'm going to focus. So purity, relatively straightforward. We can check with that melting point and boiling point. Okay, 
So at this point, I kind of feel like I want to pick up my oddities. Now, probably should have done them first, to be fair, but because now I'm going to have to skip across left and right all over the place, and I'm going to forget what each one is. Uh, actually, no, I can cheat, can't I? Because what I will do is I will grab that. And I'm going to go copy. Zoom out. Right, so we're now going into our oddities. Once we've done our oddities, I can then start looking at... I will then do conxylfuric acid, um, conxylfuric acid in group 7, uh, and then we can start looking at papers. So, what time did I start this webinar? I can't remember. Um, 55 minutes have gone by so far. Does it all seem to be working okay? Yeah, seems all right. So, right, copper 2 dichromate. So this is specifically mentioned on the Edexcel scheme of work. Uh, they love this test. Now, copper 2 plus, so I'm going to do these one by one again. I'll shrink my pen now as I'm zoomed back in again. So, copper 2 plus is a blue ion in solution. A blue ion when it's aqueous. Yeah? And the chromate ion, which is CrO4 to minus, yeah, uh, that one there is an orange ion. That's not actually, sorry, it's yellow. It's a yellow ion. Now, this is actually, this test is an ionic test. It's to prove the existence of ions and charge. Streams working good. Good, I'm glad. Thank you, uh, Sian. I appreciate your input. Uh, this is a test to, to prove that ions exist. And the way that this is done, so I'm, I'm going to cover this two things in terms of ionic tests. So the first thing is, in so if we imagine this, as um, if I had a, uh, the way this is done is like it, it's done in a U-bend in reality like this. It's really a bit gross to be fair. And then you have electrodes over here, electrodes over here. And you fill this tube with copper 2 dichromate. And what will, sorry, copper, yeah, topic, copper, copper 2 chromate. And if this is the positive electrode and this is the negative electrode, yeah, what you see is that the blue ions, the copper 2 will move over here. This side will turn blue because the copper 2 plus ions are attracted to the negative electrode. This proves without any doubts that it is made of ions and those ions can be separated. On the other side, you see yellow appear. Um, and this is, of course, caused by the chromate ion being attracted to the positive, ion, positive electrode. So you see this rather funky test. It's a really clever test. There's another test for ionic, by the way, and this is worthwhile adding to your notes. Just a general test. If I have uh, substance, this is uh, prove, proving ionic, proving ionic. There's only actually really one way of proving ionic. If I had solid X, solid X, and I think it might be ionic, the, there's only one test I can do to prove this. Yeah, and the test is to melt it, melt solid, and then check conductivity. Yeah, check conductivity. And if it conducts, so then observation, if conducts electricity, if conducts electricity, if it conducts electricity, it is ionic. Yeah. Okay. So it's rather a fun one that. And like I said, specifically on the Edexcel specification, rather interesting. Right, potassium permanganate. Ech. So potassium permanganate, KMNO4. Yeah, now this is a purple solid, a dark purple solid too, really dark. Like dark, dark, dark purple. That's not what I chose. That didn't work at all. Dark purple solid. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, dark purple solid. Now, potassium permanganate is a powerful oxidizing agent. And I don't know why Edexcel keep asking it and they, these, these questions appear. No, not every paper, but kind of like every three. So potassium permanganate is a, a powerful oxidizing agent. It loves to react with, with the hydrogen peroxide. And so the test for this guy, the test is to add, add hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. And the observation is fizzing. It will fizz. Now, what's happening is the, oh, draw a line there, and the, the identity of the person doing it, identity, is that is oxygen. So what's happening here, the potassium permanganate is acting as a catalyst. 
You form H2O and oxygen, balance the equation. There you go. You form H2O and oxygen. Now you can prove the existence of oxygen. Yeah, prove this. And we're going to prove that by doing glowing splint, relight. Yeah, glowing splint, relight. So a nice simple test for potassium permanganate, but it is just a bit of an oddity, really. Keep seeing questions on it. It's rather interesting. Uh, right, I don't think I need to do the polar covalent one. I really don't. Polar covalent is looking at whether or not it, the, the stream of liquid bends when you put a statically charged rod nearby. Don't think we really need to cover that. I'm going to cover that in the organic one. So I'll swing that into the organic. I'm going to do the same thing for biodegradable polymers. So I'm going to switch this into my organic tests. So I'm not going to do that now. You do need to know the test for water. Now, test for water, test for H2O, not its purity. Uh, I'm not in the class, but this guy gives amazing lectures. Uh, thanks, for Han. Thanks for nice to, nice for you to be here. So water, two tests for water. One, of course, is anhydrous copper sulfate. Anhydrous copper sulfate. I'll show you the, oh yeah, not a, not a P but an F, anhydrous copper sulfate. And the observation, yeah, observation is it will go from white to blue. White to blue. The equation for this is that the CuSO4, it's actually a bit of a nightmare equation because in reality it's dissolving into the water. Uh, you can't really do an equation for it. It's a bit of a nightmare, really. Five waters. You can't do that. That reaction there is impossible to do because that's a solid at the outcome. This reaction here cannot be done because you're going, you're, you've taken a solid, you've taken this solid here, you've added liquid water to it, and you're forming a solid. That can't be measured. Anyone here who's looking to revise energetics needs to recognize that equation. That cannot be done. Um, but it is technically the proof in the pudding. So the anhydrous, this one here is white technically. Well, not technically. It is white. Um, and then it turns blue when the water is attached to it. There is a second test, guys. And that is anhydrous co um, cobalt chloride. Anhydrous tap device. Anhydrous cobalt chloride. So... Cobalt clot there, so uh, this one is observation. OBS is, I've got to be careful here, blue to pink. <laughs> blue to pink. So same kind of thing that's actually happening here. You are you have cobalt, not calcium. Oof. You have co anhydrous cobalt chloride, which is this guy, cobalt 2 plus, and that's blue. Yeah, you then add, mm, I'm going to get my number wrong. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Add water. I'm going to put X. <laughs> Cheat. And I'm going to form cobalt chloride dot XH2O. And that guy there is pink. Yeah. So test for water. And both of these happen at Edexcel A level very regularly. So just be aware of it. They'll often say, give an alternative test rather than anhydrous copper sulfate. Nightmare. So test for water. Very reasonable. Um, let's go over the next one. But it's the same test for steam, by the way. The, the, the steam will just be mopped up. Hydrogen peroxide. We've done uh, per potassium permanganate. Right, the silver halides and light, okay? So this is now really weird. This is one of the, this is one of Edexcel's most, biz Edexcel's most bizarre additions to their, to their papers, which kind of drives me mad, really. Um, and that is the photolysis of group seven silver halides. Uh, so this is silver halides, silver halides, so AGCL, AGBR and AGI. Now, if you expose these things to sunlight, yeah, if you expose these to sunlight, if you expose all of them to sunlight, I think silver, I think the silver iodide is more stable. Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, I can never remember. Problem is that one's yellow. They tend to use a mixture of them. Sunlight. What will happen is you will decompose it into silver and chlorine gas. Now, the chlorine gas disappears. This is used as photographic paper. Yeah. Uh, AG. Now, it's, it happens so slowly. You don't. You wouldn't use the iodide because it's going to turn the paper brown anyway. Uh, hi, sir. Sorry I'm late. That's all right, Catherine. Um, balance the equations, of course. Let's do them with halves. Make my life easier. <laughs> so... They're all gonna in sunlight, like that. You wouldn't do. You wouldn't really use the silver iodide 
because the iodine is going to react with the paper and turn it blue black. Form starch. We don't tend to talk about that guy. These guys we do talk about though, because both of these released. I know the bromine is a liquid at room temperature, but it vaporizes very easily. These will both be gases, and they just diffuse into the air, and you never see them. But the point I'm trying to make is, we started out with a white solid silver chloride, and it turns gray because I'm forming silver metal. This is the basis of it, the original photography. The next one is, we also get cream, which I can't seem to find anywhere. There it is, that'll do. Cream, cream silver bromide, which turns gray. That one also happens. Great, there we go. So these, are you, these were the original photographic paper. Photo paper. Because you just used to have a piece of paper which is coated in these solids, painted these solids on, uh, and then you just show them, shine a light on them, and silver appears, and you form the original black and white photo. You tended to use the silver chloride, because the silver chloride, I believe, is slightly more stable, and you're going from white to gray, well, that's a good thing. You don't want to have cream to gray. That would be silly. You tend to, if you ever do photography and these kind of things, you wash off the excess silver chloride anyway, but, or the excess silver bromide. But it's fun things to talk about. Right. Now, at this point, guys, I'm done with all my tests. And what I now want to focus on, I can probably tick off. Oh, I haven't done conch sulfuric acid, have I? So I can tick all of these guys off. Yeah. I conch h 2 se I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> that's going to be a long lecture. Sorry for harm. Um, so, conch sulfuric acid. This is, uh, I'm going to zoom in a bit further. How much is that? Yeah, I'll zoom in a bit further. So, conch sulfuric acid, conch H2SO4, plus the sodium halides, sodium chloride, slash sodium bromide, slash sodium iodide. Yeah, and they're all solids. I talked about this in a previous webinar, by the way. The reason why I talk about it now is because they come up heavily in terms of chemical tests. In reality, each one of them can be actually broken down into tests we've already done today, already done tonight. But it's nice just to put it into context of here. So if I, what we need to do is put this into a scenario. If I take conch sulfuric acid, which concentrated is now a liquid, it's a colorless sticky liquid too, by the way, it's sticky, colorless liquid, and I now add solid sodium chloride, what I will get is HCl, poof, and that there is white, whoops, white misty fumes, white misty fumes of HCl, and I will also then get sodium hydrogen sulfate. So this is just a straightforward displacement, but the key thing is the white misty fumes. Then I'm gonna link this and say, prove the existence of HCl. Yeah, and you're gonna go conch ammonia. Conch ammonia, white smoke. Yeah, clever that. I know you start seeing the links being made here. If I then do the next one, by the way, that reaction now stops. Uh, and by the way, sodium fluoride does the same thing, but I'm not allowed to do that one because apparently I'll kill everyone in the building. Well, at least dissolve their bones. But I'm now going to do this with sodium bromide, and we get a very different reaction. We get poof, white misty fumes. I'm going to put white, I'll put it underneath it, white misty fumes. Yeah of HBr, but then I get colorless gas being produced, colorless gas being made of SO2, which I could prove technically with potassium dichromate paper turning orange to green. Hi, Zyna. Just decided to join in on my A-level lesson, huh? Chemical tests. Uh, we've done this, of course, Zyna, but you, you don't know this a little bit at the end. Uh, and, then we get, and then we get bromine, which is a brown gas. Yeah, brown, brown gas spewing out of it. So we get all these, that's a colorless gas. Uh, we get all of these from that reaction. We also then get sodium hydrogen sulfate, but there's no observation for that, so no one cares. Yeah, so we just kind of ignore that. There's no obs for that. Yeah, it's just gonna be dissolved in the water. The last one is conch sulfuric with sodium iodide. Oh, I've no idea why my laptop decided to do that. Sodium iodide. Now I get, poof, white misty smoke. White misty smoke of the HI gas, yeah? Then we're gonna get SO2, another colorless gas, again, same one again. Now we get yellow solid of sulfur. This is a yellow solid. And as I said, I'm gonna switch to questions in a second. This is a colorless, colorless gas. And then, then we get bad egg smell of H2S. 
This is bad egg smell. Bad egg smell. And then, and then iodine, which is a yellow, which are, uh, 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 oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And then we get a black solid or gray solid, even gray solid. A gray solid of iodine. You can also get purple vapor and whatnot. Right. I've come to the end. I've covered everything, guys. Now I want to have a look at some papers. How are we doing for questions? That's taking me one hour and nine minutes. Holy moly. Right. So super quick. Let's have a look at some papers. Super quick. I promise. So let's do paper questions. This is my support sheet. You guys all have access to this. Let's have a look at this. This is where my laptop decides to be a pain. You guys can also see my thing. So if I click on that, click on the paper. Right. This is going to take you straight to the question. Right. First question, compound A is a white solid and contains one cation and one anion. Flame test is carried out. By mixing with concentrated hydrochloric acid, piece of wire, solution, burning, yada, yada, yada. Name a material from which the wire is made. Nichrome wire. Reason. High melting point. Identify by name the formula of the cation present. Uh, so what color did it turn? The flame color turned yellow. That is Na+. Plus. Name or formula. So if you say sodium, be careful. You must say sodium ion. If you say sodium, you'll lose it. Sodium ion or Na+. Plus. Next. When aqueous silver nitrate was added to the solution of compound A, a cream precipitate formed. The cream precipitate dissolved in concentrated aqueous ammonia solution. Name the cream precipitate formed from the silver nitrate. So the cream precipitate was silver bromide. Give the formula of the anion in compound A. Bromide, Br. Oh, give the formula, Br minus. Describe what you would see if the cream precipitate was left in the sun. It would turn gray. Concentrated sulfuric acid. So we now know that this is sodium bromide. So concentrated sulfuric acid is added to A in a test tube. Steamy, misty fumes are seen at the mount of the tube. Um, after a few minutes, the content of the tube turned brown. A gas is given off, which is tested for with a piece of... Paper soaked in a solution of aqueous acidified potassium dichromate. The paper turned green. You get my point with SO2. Identify by name or the form of the mist, the steamy, misty fumes initially. That was HBR. Describe a further test that could be carried out to confirm the identity of the steamy, misty fumes. Concentrated ammonia results white smoke. Identify by name or formula the substance responsible for the brown color in the test tubes. BR2, name or formula, bromine or BR2 aqueous. Yeah, the brown color in the test tubes, that's just bromine, BR2. Name the gas which turned the filter paper green. Gas, name, 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 name. You're not allowed to use formula now, sulfur dioxide. Suggest the type of reaction of which the gas was formed in the sulfuric acid, and the answer is redox. We're done. Moving on. You ready for your next one? See repetition. Right, compound X is a white crystalline solid. I need to get rid of this other column. I don't really know how to do it. There we go. Compound X is a white crystalline solid. Dissolves easily in water to form a colorless solution. Compound X contains one cation and one anion. Warm solid X with dilute blank. A gas was evolved which turned damp red litmus paper blue. Ammonia is formed, so the ammonia ion is present. Warm solid X with dilute sodium hydroxide. It's the test for the ammonium ion. Add barium chloride to solution X. X contains either sulfite or, oh, that's interesting. Oh, isn't that fascinating? So it says it must contain a sulfate. So the observation is going to be a white precipitate, but it could also have been. That's the first one of interest. So they've just said, add barium chloride to X. And we saw, we saw, what was it? It said, so no observation. Yeah, the observation was missing. So obs, yeah, question mark. But then it said must contain. Yeah. So it must contain SO4 to minus. So straight away, the observation is a white PPT. But hang on a minute. There are others. Yeah. So it could have also been a carbonate because barium also reacts with a carbonate ion to form barium carbonate. Yeah. BACO3. And there's another one. Ooh, that's interesting. Sulfate, carbonate, could be a hydroxide. No, barium hydroxide is soluble. Um, ooh, 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 who could it be? Are they want two marks as well? Are they wanting sulfate 
Why have they given sulfate four? Oh, there it is. Sorry. Apologies. It said sulfite. SO3 two minus. They gave us this one and they haven't given us. Isn't that fascinating? What a great question. So here is either a carbonate ion or the sulfate six ion. How cool is that? Add dinohydrochloric acid. A gas was evolved. Oh, sulfite four confirmed. Add dilute hydrochloric acid. Adding it to a sulfite. Ooh. Um, the gas evolved, which they're going to want to say hydrochloric acid with a sulfite. Ooh, ooh. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, plus uh, what was the original actual person? The original was ammonium. So they're telling us it's now ammonium sulfite. Ammonium sulfite. It's that guy, and that's two minus, which is going to be a brackets two. That's a nightmare, isn't it? So adding HCl, it's not going to react with the ammonium ion. It's going to be reacting with the SO3. And the SO3, so that's going to be... Mm, probably going to form SO2. What would be the observation? Well, there's no colored gases here anywhere. Sulfate 4 could become sulfate 6. Mm. Oh, I might have been beaten. Don't know my sulfate, sulfate tests. The gas evolved. Add hydrochloric acid to the, to the result. Oh, bugger. To the result of test two. Oh, sulfite confirmed. The result, because you're forming barium sulfite. Oh, how fascinating. You're adding it to this guy. Well, it's either going to be chlorine gas or SO2, isn't it? It's got to be a gas. Who's the more powerful reducer? Chloride. Chloride's not really a good, it's not a good reducing agent. It's got to be SO2. Got to be SO2. It turns blue litmus paper to red. Oh. Oh, thanks, Harry. Which turned blue litmus paper to red. Oh, that's horrible. I would have lost that one on an exam, definitely. Blue litmus paper to red is forming SO2. Ugh, grim. That's Edexcel for you. Describes a thermocal not involving indicators that could be used to confirm ammonia is formed in part A. Ammonia is formed down blue. Ah, so the alternative test not involving indicators, concentrated HCl, and you'll get white smoke. Right, it continues. Compound Y is a white solid with one anion, one cation. Complete the table. Flame test. Brick red. Ooh, yellow red. Yuck. The um, cation is, of course, Ca2+. Gently heat the sample of Y, testing the vapors with cobalt chloride paper. The cobalt chloride paper went from blue to pink. Water is produced. Water crystallization. Heat the sample of X in a test tube. Brown, brown gas was evolved. Oh, my goodness. That brown gas is NO2. This is a nitrate test. Ugh, you do not need to know this, guys. You do Oh, group two, stability and nitrates. I think that's A2. I think stability and nitrates is A2. It is group two. Ooh. Ignites a glowing splint. Oh, well, there's oxygen gas for you. Wow, brown gas evolved. That's stability and nitrates. Calcium nitrate. Yeah, brown gas, NO2. Ooh. Not much you can do with that. Add it to the test. Calcium nitrate, final answer. Oh, uh, it's just stability. I don't want to get into stability of nitrates. I'll do it another time. Could it be CO2? No, there's no carbon in there. Um, anyway, guys, what I need you now to do is I'm going to leave you be here. The webinar has been going on way too long already, and I've got much TV to, to watch. So what I want you to now do, guys, is Take what you've done from today's lesson. You know, if you want to rewatch it, you can do it. I know I've got it at a really crazy pace. I've done all of it, though, all the inorganic tests. Um, and what I will say is have a look at the papers. Yeah. I hope it's been helpful. And have a nice rest of your evening. This will be useful for your paper three. I will see you guys soon.